Hi and welcome to Priori Digital Studio Tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to set up and use your Student Planner spreadsheet in the most efficient way. In this video, I'm using Google Sheets, but the Excel version is exactly the same. First thing, we protect most of the cells where there are formulas to make sure that you don't erase any important formulas that could impact the spreadsheet. So if you see this message, it means you are not supposed to touch it. But don't worry, I will show you step by step how to prepare your spreadsheet. If by mistake you touch a cell with a formula and see this message, simply click on the X and you will be fine. Another small warning, please do not move a cell from one place to another. If you do move a cell, it could generate an issue by messing up the automatization of the spreadsheet. The best way to avoid these errors is to copy and paste your data. Now let's have a look at the setup tab. Here you'll see three tables designed to facilitate the population of the drop-down menus in the subsequent tabs. You can manually input your data into these tables. Don't worry if you overlooked entering information into one of these tables, you can always return to this tab later to add more data. So now let's take an example together and add one more class. Let's type in history. So as you can see, every time that you want to enter some new information, you simply have to type it in. So now let's have a look at the finance tracker tab. So first enter your budget period with a start date and an end date. If you are in Google Sheets, double click on the cell and a small calendar will appear. So let's change the date, let's say for October 1st. And if you are in Excel, you will have to type in the date. And then finally enter your currency symbol. So we are in dollars, so we simply type in the dollar sign. So as you can see on the left hand side at the top of the page, you have your summary data of your budget. You can easily see your starting balance, total income, bills, subscriptions, expenses, savings, and debts. The only data you have to enter in this table are the starting balance expected as well as the real starting balance. So basically type in in the starting balance what you have at the time you prepare your budget in your bank account. So let's say $1,500. So on an important note, don't forget that the aim of a budget is to estimate your income and expenses and make sure that you have enough money to pay all for these expenses. And if you have money left at the end of the month, good job to you. You can use it to pay your debts more quickly or put them into your savings. But the most important thing is to keep this concept in mind. So let's fill in together and show you some examples. So the first thing you want to fill in to prepare your budget is the income table. So let's enter an example in the income. As you can see, I already wrote two paychecks as well as two side hustle. Let's write another one. Let's say side hustle three. And then you expect to earn like a hundred dollars. Nice. Then you can enter all your bills, expenses, subscriptions, savings, and debts. You will also have to think of categories like groceries, skincare, etc. So let's fill in an example here in the bills. So let's write phone, yes. And then let's choose a date. Let's say October 17. And then for the budget, let's say it's $90. So you can do the same thing for the expenses as well as the subscriptions and debts as well and savings. So you basically simply type in the category, the due date, as well as the budget. Again, don't forget there is a difference between a budget and your real expenses. The budget column is the amount you plan to spend for the month and the real column is the real amount you spent for each spending categories during this specific month or period. Meaning that you are on the first day of your budget period, you need to enter your starting balance, meaning the real money that you have in your bank account. So let's say instead of $1,500 that we budgeted, we have $2,000. So this will help you to track your balance for the whole period. So now to track your real expenses, you have to scroll down to the transaction tracker. In this table, you have to enter the date, the amount, then use the drop down menu to classify your expense in a category previously written in your budget. So let's enter more data for tutorial purposes. So select the date from October, let's say October 11th. And then uh, let's enter some data for an expense. Let's say we went to the restaurant, so we use the drop-down menu. And as you can see, it's automatically sorted into expense. 
So again, in the transaction tracker, don't forget to also enter your income. So let's select the date. Then let's say we earned $150 with our side hustle number three. So this needs to be entered as well. So once you've done this for the whole period of time written above, you will see on the green table all the categories in order from the highest to the smallest. Below, you will also know in which day of the month you spent the most money. Then if you scroll up at the top, you will see all the graphs showing your financial performance for the month. Now let's take a look at the class schedule tab. This tab will help you to list all your classes or part-time job, for example, during your school year or semester. To begin, simply list all your classes with their respective details. Class name, professor's name, location, start time and end time, as well as start date and repetition frequency. So let's take an example together. First, select your class name and professor from the drop-down menus. Then input the location, so the room, and following this, designate the start and the end time using the drop-down menu. Note that you can only select an hour in 15-minute intervals. So if your class begins at 8.40, for example, then simply choose 8.45. Next, specify the start date. If you are on Google Sheets, again, you can simply double click and a small calendar will appear. If you are in Excel, you have to manually input the start date. This date might be the first date of the specific classes at the beginning of your semester. Finally, select the class repetition frequency and the options include once, weekly or bi-weekly. So for instance, if you have a mathematics class every morning at 9 a.m., you have to fill out a separate entry for each day of the week. And let's say this class is weekly, then for each of them, you would select the class repetition weekly. Then at the top, you'll find a class distribution overview organized by day of the week. So now let's explore the weekly schedule tab. This tab enables you to visualize your schedule for a specific week. Although if all your weeks are similar, it can also serve as a representation of your semester timetable. On the left side, you'll find three tables. The first one allows you to select a particular week. The second one is a small calendar for visualizing this week within the month. And the third one serves as a legend for your schedule. On the right side, you'll see the schedule for the selected week. Using the schedule planner is quite straightforward. First, input the year into the schedule planner table, in our case, 2024. Then using the drop down menu, select the month, let's say March, and start day of the week, for instance, Sunday. Next, specify the starting hours of the schedule, like 7 a.m. Then you can select the week of the month. For example, week uh, number one represents the first full week of the month. And in our case, let's click on week four. As you can see now, the week is highlighted on the little calendar right below the schedule planner. The schedule table updates automatically, so you do not need to make any adjustments. Once you filled in the first table, proceed to the class color coding table. Here you can select a class and assign a color to it. Regarding the table itself, the first two cells are gray, indicating they cannot be altered. If the background is red and the text is white, it signifies overlapping dates and hours during the week. So in this example, we do have one in our sports class. In such case, you need to revisit the class schedule tab and adjust either the date or the hour. So as you can see here, we have sports and French that are overlapping. So let's change one of the two and you will see everything will change. So let's put French at 1.30 p.m. Now let's go back to the schedule and you will see we don't see the red with the white writing, but we see the French class later in the same day. Then if the background is white and the text is red, it indicates two classes overlapping during that time period. In either error scenarios, the time range is on the left-hand side of the schedule table will be highlighted in red. So for the computer studies, let's go to the class schedule to see what's the problem. So let's update those hours and see how it changes on the schedule. Let's go back to the schedule tab. And as you can see now, the computer studies is a little bit later in the day and it's not overlapping with the English class. Another interesting feature is in the class color coding. Let's say that you select the same class another time, let's say mathematics, but in another color, it's going to be highlighted and show you that you already matched a color with this specific class. 
Additionally, you have the option to print this tab. Simply select the entire table, then click on the printing icon. Then, as you can see, you don't see much, so you will have to change the printing option. So click on print and select cells. Then you can also change your paper size as well as the page orientation. So we highly recommend the portrait mode. Then make sure that all the options are to your liking and then simply click on next. So once you have your to this page, you simply select your printer and print it. In my case, I don't need to do it. So we'll simply click on cancel. So now let's have a look at the calendar tab. This tab is designed to be very intuitive, requiring minimal data input or changes. It serves as a calendar to help you forecast future deadlines. To begin using this tab, enter the year and then select the month you wish to visualize using the drop down menu. You can also choose to start the start day of the week between the Sunday or Monday. Once selected, the entire calendar uh, for the chosen month will be displayed. It is important to note that this tab is linked with the following ones, allowing for this display of data from those tabs. You also have the option to select specific data you do not wish to see in the small blue table. For example, if you prefer to not visualize your project, simply select project. So as you can see, they were all removed. So if you want to remove this filter, simply click on delete. Additionally, the small yellow table provides legends for the emoji associated with the deadlines. On the left side of the calendar, you can add individual deadlines by entering the name of the deadline, the associated class, and the due date. Once this information is entered, simply check the checkbox to mark the task as complete. As you can see, once you check the checkbox, it's going to be strike through. So now let's have a look at the project assignment and exam tab. This tab is designated to assist you in easily seeing your homework and future exams, aiding in better preparation for them. So you can enter the class name, the assigned exams or projects, the description if needed. You can also use the drop down menu to choose a priority. You can also use another drop down menu to select the status, the due date, as well as the time if you need to give this assignment by a specific time, the number of days left based on the date, as well as some space for notes. And and grades. And the last column is for the weight of your grades. I will walk you through an example together. So let's scroll down. Let's say we have some assignment in biology to do. This is an assignment. And then let's say team projects three. And then this is a medium priority. And let's say it's in progress. And uh, we already had a date, we will keep it like this. There's no time and we just need to give it on this date. So we have 10 days left based on today's date. Don't need to write a note. And then once we're done, we will be able to put on a grade as well as the weight for this specific grade. So once you finish a task, simply tick the checkbox on the left hand side of the tab. The task will then be marked as done and displayed with a strike through. At the top of the tab, you'll find a chart displaying the number of assignments or exams and projects and how many of them you've accomplished. The second chart represents your task priorities. And additionally, you can view the status distribution and your grades through the respective charts. So on the left hand side, you can also monitor your overall task completion progress. This tab also features a filter feature on the right hand side, accessible by clicking on the designated button or dragging the tab to the right. So as you can see in this filter, we have a lot of options. So we can either filter by completed task, class name, category, priority, status, you see the drill. So let's take an example together. Let's use the completed task and select the check mark. So those are all completed tasks. And then let's uh, choose a class name and then filter with mathematics. So as you can see now, we only have two tasks left. You can do all this for all the other filter features. If you want to remove the filter, you simply select the data and then click on delete. Same thing for the checkbox, simply click on delete. And as you can see, all your information will reappear. Now let's have a look at the to-do list tab. Here you simply need to input your task and associated data. So first you will have to write the task name then use the drop down menu to select the status and then enter a due date. The number of days left is automatically calculated. Then you can also choose a priority and you have some room for notes. 
Upon completing a task, you can mark it as done by checking the checkbox on the left-hand side of the table, which will then display a strikethrough effect on the task. At the top of the tab, you'll find task statistics represented through pie charts. One chart sorts tasks by status, while the other illustrates the distribution of priorities. So now let's take an example and write a new task. So let's say find a new part-time job. The status is not started, and then we will give ourselves a due date on February 29th. So this is six days from now, and let's say the priority is high. Then similar to the previous tab, there is also a filter feature on the right hand side, accessible by clicking on the designated button or dragging the tab to the right. So this is very similar to the other tab. You have a few choice to sort all your data. So you, let's take an example together. Let's select the completed data and then let's say the status is started. So as you can see now, we only have two data left. So now let's remove this filter and take another example. So now let's make an example with the start date from and to feature. So let's simply choose a date. So let's say February 15 and to February 29. So as you can see here, we only have two data filtered. So now let's take a look at the reading list tab. In this tab, you will be able to list all your books or articles that you have to read in your classes. So you simply have to enter your class name, then the book title or article, as well as the author and the due date. So this tab is basically quite simple and you simply have to type in the information. So now let's take a look at the attendance tracker tab. In this tab, you can track all your attendance for each class throughout the month. To begin, enter the year and select the month you wish to visualize. Simply type in the year and use the drop down menu for the month. Then list all your classes. So here, as you can see, I already listed biology, English, and so on. So then let's select another one. For example, let's say French. You can then use emojis in the table to make your attendance status as present, absent, late, or there was no class. The sum of each status will be automatically calculated and displayed on the left side of the table. So now I'm entering data and as you can see, the data on the left side changes. So now let's take a look at the contacts tab. This tab serves to help you visualize and filter all your contacts. It's quite straightforward. Simply enter the name of your contact, their role or position, their email address and phone number. On the right hand side of the tab, you can easily filter these contacts by role or position. So this filter works like all the other filters within this spreadsheet. Now let's take a look at the dashboard tab, which I skipped at the beginning of this video. This tab serves to help you visualize important data from the spreadsheet. At the top left of the page, you'll find a small calendar to easily see uh, the day of the month. On the small table to the right, you'll see the due tasks for today. This table summarizes all your project assignments, exams, tasks, and punctual deadlines from the calendar tab. Moving to the bottom, you'll find an overview of your classes featuring the main charts found on the other tabs. At the top right of the tab, you have all the upcoming deadlines, which you can easily filter by date or even by category. And just below Below, you will find your financial overview based on the finance tracker. So that's it. I hope this tutorial helps you easily set up your spreadsheet. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or concerns. Follow Priori Digital Studio on YouTube for sneak peeks on our new templates.